The Midgar Zalem. Everything about this terrifying creature was meant to instill fear and anxiety into the player. From its massive size, 30 feet to be exact, to the ominous silhouette hurtling towards you as you enter the marshes, the Zalem served a very critical role in the original Final Fantasy VII where it was meant to completely obliterate your party while being forgiving enough to eject one of your characters so you don't get a game over screen. Upon clearing the marshes by means of a chocobo, or I guess just really good timing, your party faces the Zalem, impaled into a tree, to really showcase the immense power that Sephiroth has over your party. Well, what does this mean for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth? How will the developers use such an iconic moment to magnify it and capture that fleshed out feel that Remake had? How can Norse mythology support the wild theories you're about to hear? What does the diabolic creation from Intermission DLC have to do with it? Well, let's mosey. The Midgar Zalem, as we all know, is actually a mistranslation of the Midgard Swarm. So the question must be asked, will the name be corrected in Rebirth? I think the answer is yes, but maybe not exactly. It could end up being called the Midgar Swarmer because in Final Fantasy VII, the city is called Midgar, without the D, so they could exclude that letter from the serpent's name as well. In this video, I will likely refer to it as the Midgar Zalem. The Zalem. And when I'm referring to the Norse creature, I'll say the Midgar Swarm. Just know that they are all the same thing. In Norse mythology, there was only one and not many. In Final Fantasy VII, oh gee! Chocobo Billy refers to it as the Midgar Solem, which implies that it is the one and only, yet Cloud and his party are plagued by numerous Zalems upon seeing the one killed by Sephiroth and even after Cloud and company defeat one themselves later on. Now, if in Rebirth, the marshes become more of an open area rather than just terrain, we could see the marshes possibly getting its own chapter where stealth may be the key to our hero's survival. This sequence could take notes from the mission in Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, where you navigate past a, well, what do you know, a giant serpent, just like Sekiro did. I think Rebirth should have the first half of the chapter focus on stealth, moving quietly across the marshes while the Zalem stalks the party amidst the fog, where it isn't quite seen fully or clearly. And the second half, the Zalem crashes out from under the marshy water, and in plain view, it's a mad dash to the end on the backs of Chocobos, baby. Maybe the camera angle can change to a top-down perspective to bring back that ominous shadow lurking underneath and then down to the ground level facing the characters as they sprint towards the camera on the mounts and the Zalem crests the marsh's surface devastating the terrain and anything else that gets in its way. This could also be an opportunity to introduce multiple, yes, multiple Zalems at one time. Perhaps several Zalems are chasing you in the swamp, each one terrifyingly massive on their own. Now, to hold true to the original and emphasize the strength of Sephiroth, upon reaching the ends of the marshes, maybe we see a towering, even larger serpent dead on a spike, or even perhaps laid slain on the side of the mountain, crushing the morale of the party. The serpents in the swamp that were terrorizing them as they fled are insignificant in comparison to this. And letting them know that what they experienced at the end of Midgar's expressway must have been Sephiroth merely toying with them. This preserves the feeling that the original conveyed. Another gameplay idea is raid style battles with the full party after all. The Zalem is described as a serpent being 30 feet tall which could have the party broken up into two teams that the player can freely switch between or have these switches be scripted. Either way, this could be a good introduction to how these battles against the weapons may go and other towering foes such as Bizarro Sephiroth at the end game if he still is going to be there. Anyways, I like the idea that once you see the true Midgard Swarm dead, you can revisit the marshes, 
for in-game boss fights against the smaller Midgar Zalams. Again, this just puts it in perspective. The smaller Zalams are your in-game power level, while Sephiroth single-handedly killed the mountain-sized Mother Serpent. Now, how can we use what we know about Norse mythology and Final Fantasy VII OG to understand the direction they may take in Rebirth? Jormungandr was, I'm sorry, that's Norse uh, for Jormungandr, but if I say Jormungandr, I'm trying too hard. Okay, so I will be referring to him as Jormungandr, was one of the three offsprings of the trickster god Loki and the giantess Angrath Boda. That's me again trying hard, Anger Boda. Jormungandr was taken and cast out into the great ocean that surrounded Midgard by Odin, who had feared the serpent was too powerful. Odin had suspected it would drown, but it actually grew so massive it was able to encompass the realm and bite its own tail, giving life to the name Midgard Swarmer, the world serpent. So, was the Zalem originally a creature of Midgar cast out into the marshes? Through my research of the beast, I stumbled upon very interesting pieces of information. In the original Final Fantasy VII, the Zalem had two formations. One was unused and taken out of the game. That unused formation was originally meant for the party to encounter the Zalem inside the Shinra building. Not only that, but the battle scene has blood on the floor and walls, insinuating that the Zalem is encountered during the release of Genova where other specimens of Hojo are encountered. Knowing what we know of Hojo, he could very easily relate to the trickster god Loki. And in this circumstance, Genova, the role of Engroth Boda. Engroth Boda is known as the mother of monsters. Yep, mother of monsters. Oh, and the Dictionary of Northern Mythology says the name translates to the one who brings grief. <laughs> Lastly, research showed some mixed reports on whether or not Engroth Boda was able to shapeshift, but nonetheless, she is said to have that power just as Genova does. So as we know, Hojo experiments using Genova cells to create monsters, so in a way, that makes them children of Hojo and Genova. Hojo may have created the Zalem using Genova cells. And then, President Shinra, who reflects the role of Odin in this scenario, deems it too dangerous, so he casts it out as a failed experiment where it takes home in the marshes, where it continued to mutate and grow from the Mako-rich environment. It would easily find itself at the top of the food chain. There's only one, so how could it have reproduced? To go back on my earlier thing about multiple Zalems, well, it is proven that some female snakes can actually reproduce asexually by fertilizing their own eggs. In the mythology, the Midgard Swarm is male, but it is not specified what the Midgard Zalem is in the original as Chocobo re Bill refers to it as it. Regardless, life uh, finds a way. To further support the idea that the Zalem was cast out by President Shinra, we know that this is exactly what happened to the Diabolic Creation, which Yuffie battles in an older version of the Virtual Combat Simulator during Intergrade's Intermission DLC. In fact, let's revisit that Diabolic Creation later on in this video. Back to the Zalem and Norse mythology. Midgard Swarm and the Wolf its sibling, Fenrir, were to cause havoc upon the world, Midgard Swarm causing massive waves and poisonous clouds, while Fenrir, with fire burning from its eyes and mouth and its jaw scaling from the heavens down to the earth. This would be known as Ragnarok, which is a weapon that Cloud obtains after defeating the Proud Clod during the raid on Midgard. Cloud having implications of being Fenrir, and with this moment also being very close to the proverbial end of Midgar, the fire cast by Beta, though, as an attainable enemy skill from the Zalem, is a bit baffling to me. 
perhaps it's a nod to the Midgard Swarmer being Fenrir's sibling and the siblings work together to bring about Ragnarok. Also worth mentioning that the Zalem is very susceptible to being poisoned, which is ironic since the Midgard Swarm kills Thor with a shroud of poison during Ragnarok. Again, Ragnarok being the event that ends the old world and the rebirth. Sorry, I always have to enunciate that word. Rebirth of a new world. <laughs> if Sephiroth and Aerith, who have lived through Ragnarok of Final Fantasy VII's original story, have truly gone back in time to remake the timeline, causing the rebirth of their world, well, the Midgar Zalem is pretty significant creature that deserves a bit more attention in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, don't you say? Or maybe, just maybe, this whole Zalem part will be cut entirely from Rebirth. And if so, maybe we can suspect it was for this reason. The Midgar Zalem has already played its part in bringing about Ragnarok of Final Fantasy VII, the end of the world in Final Fantasy VII. Just another hint that the remake trilogy is post-compilation, post-Dirge of Cerberus. One more thing. Let's talk about that Diabolic creation. Its Japanese name is the Heretic Rayleigh. In the Japanese exclusive mobile game Before Crisis, Professor Rayleigh is carrying a data disc with all the information of Soldier. The player Turk and Cloud are tasked with protecting her. They choose to save her over protecting the data disc, but no worries, the data disc can't be opened without Rayleigh. Well, little do they know, Avalanche does end up deciphering all the information, but so what happens to Rayleigh after that moment? Does she return to Shinra to be experimented on by Hojo, fusing the Genova cells with her to create the monster that we fight in intermission called Heretic Rayleigh? Since Heretic Hojo is the name of the monster we fight when Hojo injects himself with Genova cells on the Sister Ray cannon during the Midgar raid in the original game. To be exact, it is called the Heletic Hojo, <laughs> was a uh, mistranslation, but was this her punishment for letting invaluable Shinra information get in the wrong hands? Heretic Hojo shares similar attributes to the diabolic creation, such as poisonous gas, tentacles, limbs that can get lost in battle. Here's a theory that could wrap up everything in a nice, neat little package. Here we go. The diabolic creation is a product of Hojo experimenting with injecting Genova cells into Professor Rayleigh as punishment for what she did by losing the data. She becomes Heretic Rayleigh. Growing too powerful, it is disposed of for its cannibalic nature and disobedience, as said in its enemy intel description, hence the name Heretic. By disposed of, it could very well mean cast out into the marshes where it is expected to die, but instead it grows significantly larger with the help of the Mako enriched environment. It becomes the Midgard Swarmer. Since this Midgar Swarmer is female, it gives credence to the idea of children being produced asexually, allowing for the epic Chocobo Mountain sprint through the marshes just to get to the end and see the true Midgar Swarmer felled and laid lifeless scaling the side of the mountain, leaving only one question to be asked. Did Sephiroth do this? Thanks so much for watching this video. The script for the Midgar Zalem was started by our Faraga fighter, but unfortunately, he was unable to finish it before starting his flight medic and advanced life support training. Dude is a real life hero. So, uh, <laughs> major thanks to you, Venny, for starting this. Uh, but I took what he had started and just ran with it with my crazy wild theories and supporting them with my own research on top of the research that Vinny had already done. So major thanks, Vinny. I uh, hope you liked how this one turned out, man, as well as you. I hope you enjoyed this as well. You know what to do. Time for some level grinding. Attack that thumbs up button. Cast a share on the socials. And be sure to equip a subscription. Thank you. Take care now. Bye-bye then.